Hello, I'm Felicia, Reference Librarian with Massanutten Regional Library. Welcome to our monthly digital book talk. This month, we will be highlighting a few narrative nonfiction books. Narrative nonfiction, also known as creative nonfiction, are simply true stories, events that read like a novel. For example, true crimes will read like a mystery or thriller. Our first book is The White Mosque by Sophia Samatar. This is a memoir about a forgotten pilgrimage and migration, as well as an identity-seeking journey. In the late 19th century, a group of Mennonites traveled from Russia into Central Asia, where their leader had predicted Christ would return. Over a century later, Samatar joins a tour following their path and discovers a variety of characters whose lives intersect around the ancient Silk Road. During this tour, the author explores her own complex upbringing as a daughter of a Swiss Mennonite and a Somali Muslim, as well as being raised as a Mennonite of color in America. Samatar's poetic and lyrical writing style brings to life her pilgrimage, as well as the difficult journey the group of Mennonites experienced years ago in search of religious freedom. If you enjoy learning about forgotten history, other cultures and religions, you will enjoy how these subjects are intertwined in this very personal and fascinating travelogue styled memoir. Next, we have a number one New York Times bestselling author, David Grant's The Wager, A Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny, and Murder. This historical nonfiction is set in the 1700s and reads like a thriller. The story is about a shipwreck that touches upon survival and the savagery that ensued, culminating in a court martial that reveals a shocking truth. This is a page turner. You will not be able to put it down. You may also forget at times that you're actually reading a true story. This book does come with a warning that it is not for the faint at heart. Our third book is 100 Saturdays by Michael Frank. This is a remarkable story of a 99-year-old Stella Levy whose conversations with the author over the course of six years brings to life the vibrant world of Jewish roads a deportation to Auschwitz that dis extinguished 90% of her community, and the resilience and wisdom of the woman who lived to tell the tale. With nearly a century of life behind her, Stella had never before spoken in detail about her past until she met Michael. Michael had gone to Stella's West Village apartment one Saturday afternoon in 2015 to ask questions about the Juderia, the neighborhood on the Greek island of Rhodes, where she'd grown up in a Jewish community that had thrived for half a millennium. The book opens up with beautiful color illustrations, introducing the reader to the cast of characters and places we encountered throughout the story. I found this heartwarming story inspirational and tears were unavoidable. I had the pleasure of hearing the author speak and recall him saying that never did he imagine a one-time visit would become a six-year-long conversation. I adored learning about Stella and her community on the Greek island of Rhodes, and I hope you will too. The last book I'll be discussing is Another Appalachia, Coming Up Queer and Indian in a Mountain Place by Nima Avashia. When Nima tells people where she's from, their response is nearly always a disbelieving, there are Indian people in West Virginia? Another Appalachia examines both the roots and the resonance of Nima's identity as a queer Desi Appalachian woman, while encouraging readers to envision more complex versions of both Appalachia and the nation as a whole. Nima's use of lyric and narrative prose guides a reader in her exploration of foodways, religion, sports, standards of beauty, social media, gun culture, and many other topics. Nima strikes a balance as she mixes nostalgia and humor, sadness and sweetness, personal reflection and universal questions. This short book of essays had me laughing and crying. I found it immensely entertaining from the first word till the last. And yes, there are indolations in West Virginia. Although small, they are a strong and proud community. 
If you found any of these stories interesting, please be sure to check out our Narrative Nonfiction Book Club, which meets in person and virtually at 3 p.m. the last Tuesday of each month. You can find details on how to register for this and our many other book clubs on the Massanon Regional Library website's event page. And finally, if you need assistance locating your next read, please call us, email us, or visit our website to submit a Find Your Next Read form. We love making book suggestions. Thank you so much for watching.